Grim Dawn, Hardcore, Questy Sparks. Time to get back into this one. Uh, I'm just grabbing another copy in the can here before I um, before I take off for a little while, um, so that I can laze around when I get back and uh, not have to record anything. Um, all right. Well, I'm not even going to bother doing my inventory management or anything today. You can see um, we're sitting here just off another level, so we may as well get right back to it. Going to get my uh, get my uh, aura up, get my pets out, and get back in there. So last time we had just made it to the Burrich Outskirts Rift, and uh, we had just found this guy right here, Duncan. Who is probably going to become our blacksmith in um, Devil's Crossing and unlock crafting for us, which we obviously need. Um, now, in future hub areas, you're not going to have to unlock stuff like this for the most part. Um, it's just going to happen. But uh, here, we still have to do this. So, uh, let me just uh, remember what I'm supposed to be doing, which is I'm supposed to be electrocuting everything kind of what it says on the tin, right? What my character's called. Um, anyway, though, we've got some uh, breakable terrain here, so I'm just going to wander off. And this is actually... Um, out this direction is something that I was mentioning, I recall, in the last episode, where we're going to have some decisions to make about just how cocky we want to be and how much risk we want to expose ourselves to. Because... Uh, this is where we can use that strange key to access a challenge dungeon. Um, which might yield some good drops, but also might yield me getting dropped. So, um, you know, we might hold off it just for a bit. Um, get a couple other levels on, on us here, just so that we're not quite such cannon fodder for the boss. And as you can see, like, our, our, our damage output is pretty shit. So, um, probably not going to want to take him on quite yet. But, these guys are good XP, so... And also, I could get that, and I did. So yeah, so this particular item, obviously it's... We're not going to be able to use it until we hit level 20, but we just dinged again. So, yeah, so um, this item class, the Bloodsworn Codex... Um, as you can see, it is precisely built around the pet that we're currently using right now. Uh, the bonus to the pets on this one is quite low, I think. I don't think that's a great roll, although it is a health roll, so it's probably fairly high. But as you can see, it's actually the skills and stuff that we really want to get. Um, now, this one is a Codex of Decay. Uh, we'd really, um, as we go on in our build, we'd definitely be looking for a Codex of Thunder um, because that'll give us electric damage, um, like lightning damage instead of uh, vitality damage. But that said, we do use Bloody Pox. We do use vitality damage. Um, this is a fantastic item for our build. It gives us McDragon's Pact. It gives us plus two Briarthorn, and it buffs his Ground Slam ability, which is the Briarthorn AoE ability. So we are definitely going to be keeping that. But like I say, it's four levels away. It's going to be surprising how fast that goes by, um, and we'll be ready to do that. Uh, we are closing in on the target here for um, Spirit to be able to use this one, which is going to buff our pets a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just um, bump more points into this. Uh, and we, we will start to, um, we're just trying to get that spirit right now. So we will start to just drop points to open up these abilities. Because, you know, even if you only put one point in here, you know, that gives me 3% health, right? That's, that's no joke. Here, you know, it just gives me a little bit extra armor. gives me a little bit extra pierce resistance. This one's a little bit less important, but you know, still. And here it just gives your, your pets better abilities. So even though I'm kind of chasing down this right now without opening things here, I will change that. It's just that right now I wanted to um, be able to use this, which I now am. And how perfect is that? Required Spirit 262. Exactly what we've got. So let's, uh, let's hope this doesn't have Spirit on it. And it doesn't, so we're good. All right, so let's, uh, let's drop this in and drop that in. All right, so 
This is a fairly lateral move in terms of the damage that I can do, but it does give my pets that little bonus to health and damage that's going to help them be a little more effective at kind of doing everything for me. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, didn't drop any of our abilities. That's actually something you want to check every once in a while. If it modifies levels, sometimes it can shut off abilities if their level is modified. All right. So, I guess one... Th do I feel... Do I feel lucky? Do I feel lucky? I mean, I don't. Let's do something possibly dumb. Let's see if we can... Let's see if we can end this, uh play through this quick. Uh, if I go in here, I might end up grabbing like two levels. Or dying. One of the two. Okay, I'm gonna curse them up. I'm gonna get some bloody pox on them and then I'm just gonna try to live. Oh, I know what I did. I know what I did. I just realized what it was that deactivated there when I changed weapons. My Nova. So let's get that back. There we go. Oh, and actually we have, we don't want to waste this slot either. So, um, we can just throw some random shit on there. What do we want? Uh, what do we want? We have a little bit of a bleeding damage that would uh, that would be useful to. Um, well, although it only gives my pets piercing damage, and neither of them really do that. Um, and and I don't either, so pretty useless from that point of view. Um, does this give bleed? No. Well, I guess this does, right? So it kind of buffs my bloody box. That's about it. I guess you know what? Let's just uh, let's just throw some stats on there. That'll do for now. This stuff is all highly transient gear anyway. Um, it's gonna get changed around. All right, and then let's press on here. And obviously, you can see already we've got some critters that are looking like they want to drain my life. And you can see these guys are pretty buff. This is obviously my concern i still am getting those weird hitches i don't know what's going on with the uh with the computer these days you just kind of have to deal with it like i am all right we did just lose one of our pets we lost our little raven i mean he's not exactly a tough pet um he's just kind of a little uh little damage dealer right now i think i have like one point in him so he's effectively useless um, that said, it distracts opponents, so instead of ripping my face off, they, like, pluck his feathers. That works for me. Um, as you can see, we're plodding through this, right? But also, look at my XP bar right there. No joke. We're gaining some experience on this. And we do have the possibility to get a weapon that is just you know, in the early game, best in slot for us. It's actually one that, you know, I've even kind of considered that like, hey, we wanna we wanna be doing late in the game, coming back and seeing if we can get a high level version of it because um, it is really cool. It actually, uh, it's something that the enemy uses in combat against you where he summons a particularly, a, a particular type of, of um, chthonic enemy uh, that's really effective in certain ways. Um, it's quite slow, but it can actually be quite damaging, and it does have like a life drain ability and stuff like that. Uh, it's kind of cool. So if you just gain like a pretty strong summon off of your main hand, uh, you can't really go wrong with that, eh? Uh, yeah, see here, we got an ever so slightly better roll on our... Uh, that help. Yeah, you see, this is why this is why I have some concerns about my ability to survive this. Ooh, yeah, none of this is good. And I mean, this is exactly the type of shit where when you actually, yeah, see, look, oh yeah, look at this. You know what we're gonna do? Coward's way out. We're leaving. This character's gonna die if we stay in here. You can kind of see that. Uh, this is the type of thing where softcore, you just smash your face against it until you get the drops you want. Hardcore, run for the door, get out. Um, you know, and I've done that a couple times. The first couple of hardcore characters that I played, I actually did quite well because, of course, I had a lot of hours in this. But I did fall victim to that softcore thinking where I was just like, you know, eh, we'll see how it goes. You know, I mean, yeah, sure, my health is bouncing up and down like crazy. But, you know, I've done this boss so many times. I'll just keep. Oh, I'm dead. You know, 
So it's like, yeah, don't do that. Just back off. Come back. You know, I'll be in there eventually. I'll get the kill. It's fine. Um, but first, gotta survive, right? Even these regular mobs right now are throwing down a bit of a challenge. Another giant pitch. I'm gonna have to figure that out, but like I say, I'm probably just gonna wait until I do a little bit of work on the computer here. So I have a sneaking hunch given that it's in those crazy boot loops and it seems to be running otherwise fine. You know, this might be a little evidence that there is something going on in there. Even though right now everything is 100% defaulted, um, I, I, my feeling is something went wrong somewhere on the, on the main board that's just causing me trouble. I've also forgotten to do this, which is making me struggle with the basics a little bit. I guess the other possibility too is, you know, it is one of the things about Grim Dawn. Um, I don't think it looks particularly bad or anything like that. It plays quite well, but it is a it is an old game engine, right? So this is the the game engine that Titan Quest was made on. So back in the, I assume earlier two thousands. Um, I can't remember exactly when Titan Quest came out, but you know, it is a little bit of an older title. Um, and so this game does throw up some pretty interesting little glitches and weirdnesses because I think they really they really pushed the engine to make this game. Um, I mean, I'm kind of vaguely talking on my ass because I don't really know anything about game design, but like, uh, it does seem like they, there's a lot going on in this game that was not in that original implementation of the engine. So they, they would have had to do uh, quite a lot of work to get it going. Um, and so there is some jank in this, you know. Uh, once you get used to some of its quirks, it, uh, it's actually not such a big deal, but it can actually be quite baffling when something just incredibly random happens, like it just switches monitors, for example, and you can't figure out how to get it back. If that does happen to you, it's pretty easy to fix. Just switch it to windowed mode and then drag it across and then maximize it on the other screen and switch it back to full screen. Annoying, but, you know, pretty easily solvable. All right, look who we found over here. It's Angram. This is the guy that Duncan sent us to find. So this guy here is a master blacksmith and Duncan is his apprentice. And basically um, this guy has this hammer, you know, this enchanted smithing hammer that Duncan wants to get his hands on. Now, why would you favor one over the other, right? Like who really cares? When you're crafting in this, um, each smith will generally make the same item you know, like you'll you'll basically, you know, if you crafted this, it would be all the same right down until you got to the bottom of the page, and then the the smith can add a tiny different bonus, right? And so if you're choosing between Duncan here, or, or Duncan and Angram here, um, if you want to play a more martial character, uh, more physical damage oriented, more tanky, this is the guy. If you want to play more of a magic oriented character. Uh, Duncan's the guy because the little bonus that you get on the bottom will favor one or the other and, you, and you'll meet various smiths and crafters throughout the game that have different bonuses attached you can technically just ignore that um, it, the bonuses are not big but if you're really trying to min max you know um, it's worth your time so we're just going to convince him here non-violent that uh, the hammer should pass on so he just kind of caves to get me to shut up um, and then we can we can go and hand that into Duncan as we sort of jank around the screen here and drop frames or whatever's happening. Um, I'm gonna tackle, I know I've skipped a couple in the past, I'm gonna tackle this one here. Uh, and hopefully that goes well. I don't know how convinced I am that this is gonna go well. Especially with things being kind of janky. Better believe we're hovering the, the healing potions right now. So we're just trying to keep bleeds on these guys. You can see we are slowly getting where we want to go. Um, those moments where I kind of get surrounded like that, I have to be pretty careful. 
Um, and you can already tell as well, there's a little bit of a durability bonus going on now, just from having that Wendigo totem popping out there. You can see it right here. Um, and that's helping my pets stay alive. I mean, it is very basic right now. It hasn't been buffed at all, but um, nonetheless, it does give us just those little healing pulses, right? It's basically, um, if we take a look at it here while we're in the level up screen, you can see that every pulse that it sends out heals us for 2% plus 60. Um, and that is pretty useful for us. Now we've got a bunch of like really undeveloped skills here um, and we probably do want to develop them a bit more. Um, and in fact, what we're probably going to do is recover these points as well since it, you know we just aren't attacking things with our, with our weapon. So we're probably not going to need this, but we are going to use this, Grasping Vines. And the reason for that is it's another great way to proc abilities, right? So we might eventually buff it because we are going to be buffing bleed damage for bloody pox. Um, but in the meantime, we're just going to be switching that out to get our hands on this. So we're actually going to go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to head back to uh, the Burrich Outskirts Rift. We're going to tell Duncan that we got his hammer. Get nothing off that body except stench. Uh, okay, persuaded him. Here's your hammer. See you back at the ranch. And now we'll head over to uh, Devil's Crossing. Collect the XP for doing that. Um, and also, we're going to go see the Seer. Uh, and she is a character that we met right at the very beginning, but she can actually refund us those points. So there you go. Now we have a blacksmith, so, hey, so this is what he that. brings. Uh, now, one of the interesting things about the game that I think is really great and adds to the sense of progression is the fact that uh, the, this is cross-account, right? So basically, when you start in hardcore or you start in softcore, your account, like your 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 um, all of your characters put together in that hardcore or softcore, start contributing uh, to this, right? You start filling out these recipes. So over time, you're gonna have. Well, you can see this, right? Like so, these are relics. Uh, they go in this slot here. Um, we're getting up to that level where we're gonna craft something. These are glyphs. Now, obviously, here you can see these are all level 50. We are going to get one much earlier. Now, what glyphs do is they're an, actually an additional add-on that goes on your metal and gives you some type of movement ability, right? So, like here, for example, when you add this, it gives you the Arcane Rift spell. Now, this allows you to tear through reality to instantly transport yourself towards a target destination and erupt with Arcane Energies. Pretty cool. You could just burst into the middle of an enemy group, send out a shockwave of ether and lightning, which sounds okay for me, um, and blow some people up. So you can craft all this. There's more recipes like this that I just don't have, obviously. Um, and now here, I've also been building this. You can see we already have a couple of craftable blues that we found. You see right here, we could like set ourselves up with a Spellfire wand at level 25, but uh, you know we have no need for that. But you can see here, these are our crafting mats. Now these are all very simple, they're very low level. But if you wanna check out, check out something that's getting a little bit higher, we could go to here, like Nemesis is a mythical relic. So you can see that it requires level 60. And when you get in here, this is how the, the system actually becomes pretty in depth because obviously we need a rare crafting component here. So these are rare drops. Um, we need a couple of basics. You see, I have both of these in my inventory. And it, it, it automatically links my stash to this window here, which is just some real convenience. But you can see we don't have all of these. Now, all of these are other relics that we would have to have previously crafted and have in our inventory in order to do this, right? Because we want, we want the nemesis, but we have to craft all these. So you go over here to... Um, the Blade Sworn Talisman, I can't click it, and that's because I don't know how to make it. So I know that I need it, but I don't know how to make it. This is where Wikipedia gets to be a pretty good friend, because you're going to be able to track down uh, where it is that you actually can, you know, learn the recipes for this. Some of them are going to be drops. Some of them are going to be um, some of them are going to be faction rep, you know, that you have to that you have to get uh, worked out. Um, there's all kinds of ways. Some will be a quest reward. Uh, and this will slowly fill out into a massive and detailed crafting system. And now if we move along here, you can see we've got weapons, we've got, um, we've got ranged weapons, we've got armor. Um, 
this stuff I much more infrequently craft and usually it would only be very specialized items at very high level that I would even bother. This one is the one you're going to spend a shit ton of time in. Um, and now this is, as you can see here, we could craft this Maven's Lens, which is kind of okay. Um, you know, it's not even bad for us. Gives us an energy shield, 30% chance on hit, absorbs some damage, but it also gives us LE damage. That is going to be good. Um, but realistically, this pairs best with being a, um, with being a Ether Mage. But in any case, you can see here, we just have a ton of different stuff that we can craft here. And then we get down into components, right? So these are things that like Amber, for example, gives me an empowered Lightning Nova at level 20. So it's gonna give me what I'm using, but it's gonna give me a more powerful version. So we're gonna have to craft that. Fortunately, we've got the components, we can hit that up, right? So when we get to level 20, we're gonna be upgrading. Um, but as you go down through here, you can see there's tons and tons of different components. And down here, I'm just starting to get the higher level ones. You can see these are a little bit more rare. Um, some of them grant me skills and stuff like that as well. These get really cool. There are level 95 ones, you know, all the way up to that that are just fantastic. And then of course here we have consumables that we can craft. And then of course we're right getting into the first ones here where we can actually craft mats, right? So you can see here we have an ether crystal. Well, we can convert that into the more powerful ether shard for other crafting recipes. This is a, an, an extremely important system. You don't have to spend all your time worrying about crafting. The mats are going to accumulate, but sometimes when you need something really specific, you're going to be out there, you know, either farming or, um, you know, farming or, or, or rep grinding or something like that to get your hands on the components. Anyway, let's get on with our original mission right here. So, um... We're going to go ahead and refund this. We actually don't need savagery. So there we go. We've pulled those points out. We had one point in there and two points from bonuses on items. So we're just recovering one point, but it's going to let us unlock a little Stay bit more. Um, and every point really kind of counts when we're here at the beginning. So uh, what we're probably going to do is we are going to get this because this is going to give us more proc ability. Uh, we don't necessarily need it right away, but we're still going to get it. Um, and we're going to add this. Get an immediate bump to my health, which you saw happen down there. And we are going to get Ground Slam because we know that we have an item that that's going to be on uh, coming up. Now let's take a quick look over to Cultist and see if there's anything here that we want to grab. Uh, realistically, all we probably want to do here is just continue to add damage to Bloody Pox. Um, we are going to start making a dash for wasting pretty soon because that's when it starts to get good. Um, and we're also going to probably be taking Sigil of Consumption, even if it's just at one point. And the reason there is just because it's one more skill that pulses over time, and that allows us to activate abilities off of it a lot more effectively. Uh, so that's about it. That's all we're going to do for that level up. But that does actually expand things quite a bit. Now you can see here my Briarthorn did despawn. And that's because I changed his abilities. So we have to spawn him back in. Um, and now let's see. Uh, did we... Uh, yeah, so we didn't really do anything that we actually need to worry about. Other than um, adding in uh, our Grasping Vines ability. So we're actually going to go down here and add that into our loop. Um, and basically, I'm going to want to get this. Okay, so we're going to put our Wendigo Totem here. We're going to put our Grasping Vines here. Uh, and we're going to relegate our Lightning Nova all the way down here. Eventually, this is probably going to be all the way off the list, right? We're not going to be using it anymore. But up until then, we'll just kind of keep it around for those moments when we're surrounded by a lot of little numpties. Um, all right, so let's try to push our way forward a little bit here. Um, well, actually, you know what? We only have about five minutes or so left of the time I want to record. So a little bit of a little bit of a um, combat combat slow episode, but we did make a lot of progress. We got our crafting options opened up. We got our leveling kind of sorted out a little bit. We got a little bit of new gear on. Uh, so next time out, we're going to just kind of push forward into Burrich Village. Uh, we're going to gain levels pretty rapidly throughout here um, now that we have this bonus to XP recovery. 
Um, and we're going to work our way towards level 20. That is the next gear milestone and probably the next time that I'm going to dig through the stash and see if we can uh, see if we can tool this character up a little bit. Uh, we might even have much better Bloodsworn Codex in there as well. Um, that is all going to be next time, however. So thanks for watching and I will see you then.